All right, so in this video, I'm going to talk about exposure compensation. This is something that I did cover in photo 100, at least my section. So if uh, you'd like a review or if you're unfamiliar with the topic, here goes. To start off to understand really what exposure compensation means is I would like for you to set your camera in an aperture priority mode. Choose the f-stop anywhere around f4 or 5.6. If you do this indoors, um, the wider open the aperture, the better, so you can get a little bit more light in. And then I'm going to have you take two different photos. One is you're going to take a photo of, for instance, your lens cap, something black, on something black. So if you have a black chair or black backpack or something like that, fill the frame with the two black items. If you have trouble with your lens focusing, then make sure that you um, put the focus point on where the lens cap meets up with uh, the background. So it's like an edge of the lens cap and then it will focus. Take the picture. You're going to do the same thing with something white on white. If I do this in the classroom, I use dominoes on a white piece of paper, but maybe you have something white, a lid to something, a cap, white on white. Do the same thing again. Fill the frame with just the white on white. After you look at those images, observe, do they look accurate in exposure based on what you captured? So is the black on black really black on black? or is it a little bit more gray? Is the white on white really white on white? Or is it really gray? So that's kind of the idea behind exposure compensation and how our cameras are programmed. So let's take a look at, there is a feature on your camera that allows you to intentionally over or under expose. You can do this in any modes. If you're in manual mode, you don't need to use the exposure compensation button. You just intentionally over or under expose the image using either the shutter or the aperture setting. So let's imagine when you took those black on black and white on white images, your meter scale would have been at the zero mark, at the perfect mark, proper exposure, because that's what the camera is programmed to do automatically, especially in an aperture and a shutter priority mode, uh, even the P, the pre-programmed mode. So that's what you got, but yet your images did not look accurate. And that is because cameras are programmed for average exposures. Is black on black or white on white considered an average thing that we might shoot? Not really, that's pretty extreme, that's less common. So the camera is not programmed to evaluate that type of a thing, therefore it, it evaluates it and says, you know, I'm kind of used to this average type thing. I don't think it's really supposed to be that black. So the camera actually lightens the image. That's why it's closer to a gray. And with the white images, same thing, but it darkens it a little bit and goes closer to gray because the cameras are programmed for averages. And if you take pictures in extreme situations, extreme exposures, the camera can't calculate that. So uh, what you'll do is you'll change your exposure compensation to either underexpose to match what you see, such as the black on black, or overexpose to match what you see uh, for the white on white image. In order to find your exposure compensation option, you can see either a little plus minus button somewhere on your camera. This happens to be a Nikon camera, but sometimes they're backed by the thumb pad. Or in your menus, often they are the meter scale is, is available inside your menu. Once you activate that, then you can use your thumb pad and move back and forth left and right. If you're in aperture priority and you change the exposure um, compensation, it will change the shutter speed. So as I had you do the exercise of black on black and white on white, I didn't really care what the shutter speed was. So I wasn't really caring if the image was blurry or not. We were just looking at the color of the image or the exposure of the image. So go ahead and take a few moments. You can pause the video if you'd like, but try that exercise again. And this time on the black on black, intentionally underexpose, probably at least a stop. So one stop is that first big hash mark. If you look at the in-betweens, those are like thirds or fourths of stops. And then with the white on white image, try at least a stop, maybe a stop and a third or a stop and a half, something like that and keep adjusting the exposure compensation until you get a proper exposure. You can also review the histogram to see if you got a proper exposure. If it's white on white, it should be shifted pretty far to the right. If it's black on black, that histogram should be shifted pretty far to the left. So again, go ahead and stop the video and give that a try real quick and then you can resume. 
So here are examples when, um, although the image on the left is the proper exposure, I have intentionally used exposure compensation to underexpose because it made a more exciting photo. I, by uh, going a stop underexposed, I darkened out the background so it's less visible. I also got slightly closer to the plant as well, but because the light, the backlight was catching um, this fiddle neck, uh, it just made a much more stellar image. So you can use this to either accurately portray your subject or to create the vision that you see. So exposure compensation all plays into Ansel Adams um, zone system and it also plays into your whole histogram. So I'd already mentioned to watch your histogram. As you look at this particular histogram and you see from your black, the zero values to the 255 up to your whites, uh, this particular mountain range histogram is lacking the bright whites. If we drop down, we can see that these color relationships or tonal relationships match Ansel Adams zone system. And so uh, years ago when Ansel first identified exposures and then he would dodge and burn in the dark room to capture what he saw. And so he would actually write on his prints, this should be zone two, this should be zone five, this should be zone 10. Um, and so on. And so this is how it all relates back to traditional film photography. But as I mentioned, our cameras are digital and so they are programmed to see what's considered an 18% gray. An 18% gray is basically this mid-range tone right here. And like we saw in those two images, black on black and white on white, if the camera doesn't see that, the camera is manufactured programmed to force that in an image. So that's why it took your black on black and dropped it down, took your white on white and dropped it over as well because it's expected to see 18% gray. So here's a couple um, examples and how it relies with your metering in your camera. So the image on the left is snow covered uh, tree limb with no exposure compensation and I was using matrix metering. So matrix, uh, the camera is evaluating the whole entire frame. Whole entire frame includes a lot of snow and then some little twigs. Uh, notice there's, uh, there is detail, but the snow is not really white. It's, it's kind of gray. And so by adding uh, a plus one exposure compensation, so that's a full stop exposure compensation, I now captured an image of white snow. And that's if you're using matrix uh, metering. The different types of metering will also help you identify what the camera is really seeing, okay? So try to do the same um, idea, but this time using spot metering. But with spot metering, I had to pick the spot. So in this case, I picked the black mailbox. So on the first image with no exposure compensation applied, I took the image and the camera is only looking at this area and it says to me, oh, you don't want that darker black it must mean it needs to be lighter. So the camera actually lightens the image. And then when I take it again with exposure compensation, I reduce it by a stop. Now I get a true black uh, mailbox, as well as I still have detail and texture in the snow and ice. So a couple other examples of when you would use it on the far left, top image that is the salt flats up in Utah. And it's such a bright environment. I am shooting it um, at least plus two thirds, sometimes a whole stop overexposed uh, with the exposure compensation to get accurate images. Image on the bottom left is another example of using the silhouette. So intentionally underexposing just to get the silhouette aspects. As I mentioned before, if you're using aperture priority mode and you use the exposure compensation feature on your camera, that will change the shutter speed. If you're in shutter priority mode, it will change the aperture. And again, if you're using manual mode, you don't use the special buttons, you just physically change either the aperture or shutter to un underexpose or overexpose depending on what your intent is. So go ahead and give that a try. I would encourage you to practice this a few more times, go out in a bright lit situation and force a silhouette and do a few things like that so you get very familiar with exposure compensation. And hope that helped you out. <laughs>